Welcome everyone to the Eve Growing Concepts. Here we're going to be talking about fermenting. We're going to be opening up some bins, probably about 12 bins that I've packed. We'll open them up. They're a little late in being packed. I don't even know the dates these days. I've been getting so lazy about putting the dates on each individual container. Rather, I open them like they here, these 12 here. I set them uh, October 14th and they'll be opened um, November 14th. This whole section will do all at one time. So I'm not labeling each, indiv each individual bin these days. I'm doing by section. So we're going to be opening this section up. So whatever's here, I'm going to show you. You're going to, I'm going to hide nothing. I'll dump them out. And um, with fermenting, we do get our vermin that get inside these containers through their larva or their eggs from the way you handle your food. If you're not vigilant in keeping these insects from uh, laying their eggs and stuff like that, you're going to get fruit flies, you're going to get these scutter flies, you're going to get all kinds of stuff in these things. I get those um, sap beetles, sap beetles? Little small beetles, I'll put a, put a picture of them in there. I get those too. But anyway, so I got three pallets here. All these pallets, they're on wheels. And they're separate in their own right. Each one is separate in their own right. But... Um, all the drainage goes to one little location down here. So any drainage in any of these goes down through here, over and down to this spot where I collect it, and that's added to our nitrogen, where we add to our CBCB. And um, so I've got these bins here. Here, I've got, I've got the T55. This lighting isn't that good, and i got to talk kind of fast because I don't want this furnace going on. This, this is going to be mostly opening bins for the most part, right? So I got this T55 where I'm doing house compost as well. And here I am doing the uh, humidor with great results. We'll talk about that in another. I don't want to turn you off here. But we'll talk about that and how you can process your own outputs right in your apartments and your condos, which might be very important in the very near future. You know, we had a power outage not so long ago. And a relative of ours that lives out in the woods, she's got acres of land and she's got a pump. But guess what? Um, when the electricity goes out, the pump doesn't work, so she can't flush her toilet. So it's a good thing to know how to handle these outputs. It's not a, a scary situation, as you may think, because there's many ways we can handle our outputs, whether we do Joseph Jenkins uh, method, humidor method, or we do the vermiculture, uh, red wigglers processing it, which is much faster, and the end result, of course, is castings. We'll talk more about that later on. Let's get back to here with fermenting. So first, I thought I was loving this T55 so much, this continuous flow system. I was thinking, oh my God, why go through all this effort when you got one system and you can process it like that? Just get a couple of these T55s. But the beauty about fermenting is you can do all kinds of experimenting. I've gone here, I have a rabbit in here, and this T-shirt is dangling here. This is where fermenting meets um, these Vermi worm bag, so the urban worm bag, right? The, the, um, the cloth worm system. So, all right, let's open up some containers and we'll talk while we're opening them up. All right, let's get started here. I put some paper down here just so I still got my power composter hooked up in here. What's gonna fly out of here, guys? I think these buckets are probably August sometime, middle of August maybe. I forget the date. Oh, this one I don't even want to open up. That's right, too. This one is... This one is a rabbit. That was 922. I want to open that one. Still doing roadkill. That's another beauty about fermenting. There's all kinds of different experiments you can do. So let's open this guy up. Ready? What flies out, flies out. What's it look like, guys? Ah. Okay. So basically, and we'll clean that out with a card later, show you how to do that. Let's just try to go as fast as we can, open as many as we can up. Okay, this one looks pretty good. Still see I got some grass in there that I've been trying to not. Let's put this over here. This one looks pretty darn good, actually. All those go here. Save this. That's all the tube is, guys. Use what's available. That's the aeration tube. All right, so all this stuff is pretty much 
This is all good stuff right here. Let me see. Do I see any cocoons in here? Let me see. My eyes are getting tougher and tougher. Yeah, I see a couple. There's one. Um, I like this. There's two, three. Oh, yeah, four. Okay, good. All right, let's put all these in here. Let's try to move fast because I don't know how much film is on my camera either, guys. So let's just try to move fast. This stuff I'll put over here for now and set up another bin. All right, let's see here. Let's put this here. This here. Let me get this card here. Very easy to clean, folks, these things, all right? Take off this the subfloor, nothing to it. Boom, boom, and of course this can helps protect the aeration tube. I mean, this drain from, there's a spider. You guys go right over here, boom, boom. <clears throat> Let me just show you how I clean it. Very easy to clean. Right around. Alrighty then. This one will be the one I'll put all this unfinished back into here. And I have a lot of food to process. But I think all of these, ones that I'm opening, I probably will all use all new. All right. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. You just make sure, after you're done cleaning it out, Make sure that all the holes have their screens on them and no holes in them like that. That's good. This one could probably be cleaned out. Cleaned out. I usually clean them out in the spring. See that little hole? There's a little hole right here. That one's got to be replaced. Hmm. Yeah, it does. I don't want to take the time to do that. Really, but I'm going to have to. Let's see here. Where's that hole? That one looks good. That one looks good. Fine. There's that. Got a little hole there. I don't know how it happened. Very easy to fix. What I do is I... Here it is here. See, I just have this net here. I just have this piece of plastic. I think I showed you that in one of my videos that I... I uh, just go like this. Get myself this material, this nylon material. Put it on here like that. Bam, bam, bam. This is a pain because I hate to run out of space on my phone. So I just shove that in here like that. And then I get my razor blade. Like this. Nice sharp razor blade. And I just cut it right out. You want to make sure that... There we go. This is going to be good. Okay, then, just like this, and put this to protect the aeration hole, I'll put the subfloor on that, and boom, then what I do is I get some newspaper, and this newspaper here comes from my quail. A quailer. We'll talk about that later on in life. I've been doing some quail. Basically, I just go like this. I don't have my scissors on me right now. So I just make a little air hole. That goes here because the bottom, there's a worm spot left in there, but that's all right. It'll have to be joined by others. That like that. And then we put this. This. It's got big holes on it, so I wrap it. I don't necessarily, when I have a smaller grid, I don't, but I wrap this like this. I should have had this part pressed up already. And I just put it like that, boom. And that's where all the stuff that's not finished goes, just like that. Boom, come here, boom. So that's where we're gonna put all the stuff unfinished from all the bins that we have to open today, okay? There's that one. now. This paper that I threw off, just throw it right in that bin. It's getting ready to go use. You go over here, get another bin. Boom. <laughs> and let me open this up. Now, sometimes I get fruit flies flying out of here like crazy. 
So that's how that one looks. Let's see, this had a little air hole there. I think something could have got in out of there, right? Yeah, see, that's how stuff get in. You want to have all your screens so they can't get in. Okay, so it looks like there. And there's kind of a smell in that one. Lots of springtails, see all those? Those guys are not, not good. I'm gonna put those guys, let's see. I'm gonna put those guys, come here. Yeah, this one could have been better. And this one doesn't smell too good either, as you could probably imagine, but the worms are doing very well in the witness of it all. I'm gonna just throw these right into this new one, just like that, boom. Just throwing it right in there, boom, into the new one. This stuff is not complete. And there is a smell to this, and of course you can tell by all those springtails that it's very wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here, and at least they're doing fair enough. But this is a kind of not a good bucket at all, is it? It is what it is. We're gonna throw these right on into this other one. And I'm gonna add some, I have some quail manure that I'm going to just add with it. This quail manure is all dry material that I'm going to throw in here. Help soak it up. Along with, of course, some grit. Now this is oyster shells I got at the beach. This, this is just oyster shells. I'm putting that in this container here. Should be showing you that, but this is basically what's happening here. No rhyme or reason to this. You can do it fast once you start getting it down. This bin was not a very good one, was it? Let's see here if we can salvage anything. Worms look nice and fat. As we've talked about in some of our Facebook groups, sometimes moisture and is really, a wet bin is probably a healthier bin in all ways. I see some eggs in here. Again, there is a smell going on. This was the thing I used this time. Because this is all just old wire that I keep. Save everything, waste nothing. Everything is sacred. There is a lot of eggs here. These worms look happy enough. Uh, all the stuff that's not done, I'm throwing it right into this bin. All in all though, it's moist. It's wet. Another thing with, with, with those um, pallets I was showing you on wheels, I'm gonna have two of them that are gonna be my worm farm, my worm farms. And the third one, since I had that T55 to break up a lot of my food, the third one I'm going to use as my nursery. These fermenting bins make excellent, excellent um, nurseries for your for your uh, finished castings. Another one here. All right. Let's open. What's this? Our third one, right? I see some mites in all a little bit, a couple of them there. Ready? Off it goes. See a couple of flying, flying fruit flies. These guys are saying, Where you been? I've been starving. We'll take care of you nice. Yeah. How's it look? Not bad, that one smells pretty good. You can tell the ones that smell good. This one did well. These guys were probably hurting for food. Sorry guys, I probably went six weeks with some of these. Again, my summer was crazy. We had this crazy summer and I haven't been as vigilant with opening up these bins. But a lot of parts with fermenting, unlike with the T55, and as you guys know, with your vermi bags or worm bags, there's less parts to deal with, so that's kind of good. But the beauty, again, with fermenting is that each farm is individual, and you can experiment with more. Look at this. These guys were starving like crazy. There's literally nothing left in here. Very little for them to get at. So they're going to be psyched. So we'll put you guys in here. What I usually do... The, the old stuff, when I'm filling this new bin up, the old, all the stuff that's not finished has worms in it. 
so I don't add new worms. These, all these worms here, they'll go into a bin that's got all kinds of new material in it right here. So let's put you guys over here. These subfloors, put them aside. Boom, so that's one, two, three. Let's go get another one. Hardly any in that one, right guys? So here's another one. That one was light too when I opened it up as well. So let's see, let's open this guy up and see what we got going on. I love opening them up and seeing what we got. Ready? That looks pretty good, right? Let's see, let's dump it out. A lot of material there. And this does kind of smell like a stagnant smell. Not so good, don't like that. So I don't know how I did that. Let's see how I packed this one. I think this is the one I did layers, not the composting rolls. I did layers. And I don't know if that was a good idea, Maki. So what I'm gonna do with all that moist stuff here is I'm going to just grab that whole thing here, roll it up in this thing, stuff it in this new one. Lightly stuff it. And there is certainly a smell to that one that I don't like. So I don't know, let's see how the worms fared. I see some kind of a maggot looking thing, mostly, most likely a fruit fly or a or one of those other scutter flies or whatever you call it. So basically, let's go right back in here. This one too. That's, is that a roll? That's a roll. I don't know what it was. I always wear gloves, folks. It's always a good idea. And so, let's get some more paper. This has soaked up a lot of the m moisture and stuff. I can't, I can't tell. Let me put some, yeah, I don't know what this is all about. I'm just gonna stuff that right back in here. Um, these, that's why four weeks is a good timeline to see what's going on in your bins. I, I say eight weeks because I know with, when you're doing the fun stuff they really like, the humanor, eight, we, um, eight weeks is like guaranteed finished for them. So these guys, I don't like the way that bin looked at all. But you get them, guys, when you're juggling as many as I'm juggling, you get some that are not so good. And let's take a look at that bottom one again now. I'm, see, that's all I had with that one there. But let's take another look at that. This one looks, you could tell that that one didn't look that good either. So I don't know what I did wrong. I see a lot of mold in there. Could have been whatever I processed again. With fermenting, as far as I'm concerned, there really is no no-nos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give these worms a break from being in there. And I'm just gonna take some of this, and put it right on top of right here. All right. Put that right on the top of here, so it looks similar to that. So I just put the castings with worms. I'm gonna cap this. Put a cap on it, and that one's complete. Now, I have been clean one to start a new one. So, I got some subfloors here, tube here, and the can. So, now, start another bit. So we're opening three, and so far we're starting on a second. So I'm getting... Okay. That's good castings right there. That's all finished. This is from the second bin I did. I'm going to lose track of the bins. I think this is the second bin I did. Not that last one. It was. That one looks like i got to do a little more cleaning of it. Again, I'm going to go down to probably 30 bins, and then that third pallet on wheels is going to be all my winter's saved castings. Those will be my nursery where I will have those worms, those babies become, or that nursery so I can rescue the babies. I'll put a composting roll in there, 
those babies will hatch and go into the composting roll and then I'll add that composting roll to a fermenting bin and so starts the whole cycle all over again. I hope I'm not moving too fast but my phone has very little storage on it. I don't know if I said this already and I don't want to run out. Am I still flunk going here? Yeah, 17 minutes guys. I hate long videos but this is going to be long. It's for the diehard vermiculturist who's interested in verma in, in uh, vermenting to see exactly what you got to do. This is it. You tell me, is it easier than uh, a continuous flow bin? There's pros and cons with each, and there's no reason why we can't do all. This was all that mold that was on that other one, but I'm going to use it in this one. I'm going to notice I haven't put any duff in any of these. Yet, in fact, I'm not going to because I don't have any duff with me at all down here. So, I don't even have my scissors with me. I started this video and I wasn't prepared. Prepared. That like that. Bum, bum. Now I'll put this one on here like that. Bum. And we'll start adding our unfinished stuff. All right, so this is all finished stuff. You guys had a tough bin that time. Hopefully your next bin will be a, good, a better one, right? So you guys all go over here. All this unfinished goes over here. Bum, 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 this paper. Throw it right in the bin. What else did I want to do? Okay, let's open another one. See, look at all the mold on that last can opened. That's good. Put that there. And we'll open our... Here's the one that was underneath that one we just opened. So you could tell there was something going on with it. I don't know what, but I probably packed it too acidic or what, too wet maybe. Maybe this one's gotta be washed. Let's hope this one's a good one. The outer air, probably no air. That's another thing when these, a lot of things can happen. We've talked about this with Alan, right Alan? To keep your, you want this on the ins, inside so the worms can't block it up. See these maggots? Look at all those. All those. Not good. And I see, I see these scutterflies scutter is what the, what's going. I got a bunch of spider here that's going to take care of these guys. These ones I'm just going to drown and compost them. Everything gets eventually composted. But the bin above this was very acidic, dripping down into this bin, which goes right to this aeration, goes right down to the next bin. Let's take a look at this and see what the heck. Hopefully it didn't ruin it. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's see here. A lot of scutterflies now. It's all right, I got a lot of ba new baby spiders being born today, or this, this fall when all the baby spiders start coming out down here. I try not to kill those because they're my friend. They work with me. The stuff goes right in here. See, it's, it's fine, it's fine. I see some scutter, uh, some, um, Springtails in there, but that's not bad. I'm gonna throw those right down in here. This was a pretty good bin right here. They were almost done their food as well. Got some corn husks. They love that. Watch, there'll be some in hide in there, right? I don't want to open it and crush them. Those go right in. How about this guy? See those guys? They love, love getting in those little nooks and crannies, right? So this is all stuff. Grass. This is probably an older bin. I'm getting rid of grass, grass because I think I got a lot of these um, these scutterflies from the grass that snuck in there. This guy up. Oh, he's a nice little treat in there. Right? So let's get this. There's some food. Put those right into there. Boom, boom. All the stuff that's not finished goes right back into the next fermenting bin. This is left is all castings. So that's good. Look, each one you open is going to have a worm in there, guaranteed, because they like getting those little sneaky spots. So corn husks all day long. Everything, folks. Waste nothing. They will eat it. And the beauty about vermiculture compared to hot composting, which, of course, we do both, because our nitrogen, liquid nitrogen coming from all this food waste is got so much nutrients in it too, where I put that right into my CBCB and I get some very hot, hot heats, continuous hot heat that we are going to show you what, to, what an urban farmer can do with that heat. It's going to be great. 
I uh, can't wait to show you. And so there's tons of eggs in here, guys. Tons and tons of eggs. I don't want to take the camera down and show you. Are we still going? Yeah, 22 minutes we're in. My how time flies. Chicken bones, guys. Guys, with my new composting technique, power composting technique, I'm going back to it. You know, I was doing the um, um, flat-ended all. Oh, here's a um, here's one of those beetles. Uh, what the heck was that? Whatever. He's one of those. They could, that's one of the grown-up ones. I'm that's getting less of those. I got those one time. I think I might have told you guys when I was doing um, cow manure, fresh cow manure. I think they got into my system. But that's all right. Everything's good, guys. As long as they're breaking down, eventually it all becomes composted anyway. Let's put that aside, and let's put this right into here like this. <coughs> all right. This stuff will all go into the nursery, all these eggs, and again, we will reclaim those babies and put them into the system. Let me go get another one. And I'm going to spread some of this eggshell on this new one. And it's not rocket science, guys. And use what you have. Let me go get another one. I think we got six more to do, guys. When I say guys, know that I'm saying girls as well. It's just a form of communication, right? So, let's open this guy up. You ready? Screen looks good. Uh -huh, here we go. Ooh, lots of them. They won't go anywhere. I've got my basement down here is separate from the house. I don't recommend necessarily doing it in your basement unless you have a setup like mine. Wow. That one smells acidic too, like the last one. So we got some mold growing for sure, right? So let's see. Look at that mold, right? Wow. Look at that white color, rich and nice. Not a good thing though with your worm bins. I don't know why that happened. This one, let's see what we got. How are your worms looking? How are you faring? I know the scutterflies loved it. This one really did not do very good at all. Not good at all, and I don't know why. You know why? I think I layered this one, didn't do the compost route. And that's not good. I didn't do it as a composting rule. I did it, nor did I. I don't know. I I don't know. I see that a couple of beetles. It's all right. These guys. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Yeah, I layered this, and then put it in there. I'm not doing that again. I don't think. Composting rolls are so reliable. I don't know why I got to change it up when it works. But so we got some smell going on. That's not fun. I'm gonna put some of this right in here. This will all be food next time, hopefully. Put that there. And when I pack them loosely, you want air to get at these. You want the air to get at them. So you pack them loose, just like that. That's a roll, boom. This one too. Not happy with this, this bin at all, guys, so. What do I got in here? So, no worms in there at all, so that's very acidic. I'm gonna put it in here loosely in here and just get rid of it look at that pretty color though wow that's a nasty looking mold and it looks looks like whatever now this is damp what i'm gonna do i got some paper here from my coiler where i keep my coil and when i clean the cage i just keep the paper and that it's going to be fed to my reds. So it's all got all kinds of good stuff all around it for the worms that'll eventually eat it. Nothing, again, is wasted. And we're making soil. You know what's interesting? How much time do I got as I ramble on here? What's interesting, guys, is, you know, they talk about our farmlands, our commercial farmlands, how all the nutrients are being depleted. Well, those nutrients are going into our food. And we, for the most part, just throw it to the, land, to the landfill. But all this stuff is where we need to try to get it back into our food system, into our growing. And of course, with the Eve growing technique, this stuff, see these guys aren't looking that great. 
And I don't see any eggs or cocoons in there. So let's just take all this food and all these worms. I'll give you a chance to. McDonald's bag. I'll just throw those right in there like that. Boom. Loosely packed. This one's almost full. And you poor guys, I feel bad for you. I don't know how long you're in there. You look tiny too. So got some castings, but who knows? That's probably the stuff I put in there to start with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig down deep down here where some of these other good ones were. And I'm going to put you right on top of here. Can you guys see that? Probably not. Huh? I'm just going to put these guys right on top of here like this. I'm trying not to crush any there. Go to the bottom where they're all going to hide. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to say sorry about that. All these older ones that were in here. Hopefully you'll get in a better bin the next bin. <laughs> that bin wasn't that good. Uh, and I'm checking the screens on them all. This is an older model too, an older fermenting bin. These this bin, these bins have been going probably going on five years each of these bins. They're invincible. That's all I'm gonna do with that, guys. Maybe I'll add a little add a little of this just for fun. Bum 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 bum. Some of those are a little big. And I'm gonna cap it. And that one's gonna be done. Let's get another one. I'm not happy with that one. Oh, this one I'm probably not going to be happy with too. It seems too heavy for going so long. Oh, look at this. I found a... I don't know how these guys are, but there's a soldier fly. They look like wasps, don't they? Sorry, guy. I didn't mean to kill you. I know a lot of people are probably thinking, what'd you do that for? They're good. They really are, but it's cold out there right now, so no matter what I do with him, he doesn't have a chance, I don't think. He must have been in one of my bins that had a hole in him. This one, I feel bad for those, that bucket. That wasn't a good one. All right, let's try this one. This one seems heavy. I'm feeling this one's not going to be a good one either. Ready? Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time only, in your pleasure, uh, bam. I see a lot of scutterflies, a lot of them. Not happy with you guys at all. That's all right. And I've got to start another bin. Ready? Let's see here. Not bad. See a lot of spring teals. Everybody looks happy in here. These look nice and big in this one. So that one looks good. I gotta clean this one out because I gotta start a new bin and put some of this other stuff in there. Yeah? Let me get my trusty card. I have a ton of these cards. They were great for cleaning these, for doing a lot of stuff. Let me take this nice cake crumb. Do you guys want to see that part of it? Let me get this cake crumb. This awesome crumb. All that stuff on the side is all pure casserole. So this was a good bin. Surprised. Well, not surprised. I get more good bins than bad. But sometimes, you know, in the course of your day, depending on what you're composting, you just, you know, as you do it, like I I do it, you get, you know, you get um, just too like, comfortable and stuff. You think you're doing it right, and I mean, there really is no mistaking, especially when you have as many reds as I have. I have a ton of reds that I haven't even collected out of my farm yet out of my Eve Towers. I've got so many reds, I'm sure. I can't wait to open my um, my new, I called it the Sue J uh, Tower. It's an amazing tower, folks. And I think this is the way we're gonna be doing commercial growing in the very near fu future. And I have a feeling that this tower is gonna show people to forget about, especially on a residential level, to forget about Soilless growing. You know, the problem with soilless growing, it does work. We all know it works. We all know it works. That's great. But you know what? It distracts people from composting and vermiculture. The very things we need to do. The individual, us as individuals. We'll talk more about this in upcoming videos, but we have to start composting. That is how we as citizens can do our job. These things I usually give a good clean in the spring. So these all look pretty good. 
I should run some water through it, but I'm gonna go into the cycle because I'm filming now. I'll do that when I'm not filming. So again, put a paper floor down and I'm gonna use as a subfloor. Why not? It's nice and thick. Real thick. Make my little thing there. Boom. Put, I'm going to put this one on. Let me just take this one like this and I'll rub it on here. What the heck? My love mold. I'm going to put that again on the bottom. I gotta get to my my subfloor like that. Bomb. Put my subfloor. Doesn't it take much, guys? Subfloor paper. Paper and of course our aeration tube. They love to get in here and clog them up. The little this little grid here. Hate to throw anything out, but that might end up being thrown out, not having any other use for it. So I put it like that. And now I'm going to, I think I'm going to add a layer of paper first. On this one. And maybe I'll spread some. Now I'm just going to add some paper on this for now. Like that. And then I'm going to put my new material in there. Pack it loosely, guys. If you're ever going to do fermenting, pack it loosely because you want aeration to flow. I'm going on 30, over 30 minutes right now. See, they're doing fine in that one. They're working on it. This is the stuff that's not complete. That was a heavy bin, but I must have packed that full. There, there. They're doing fine in there. They're all on that roll. They're doing good. Boom. Just rambling off, off the mouth while I'm looking at this stuff. Boom, boom. Here's that one that was not a good one. You could tell, look at the mold that was on there. I wonder what happened. Maybe the bottom air thing clogged, I don't know. Boom, boom. All the stuff that's not finished. Boom, boom, boom. This is a uh, pit from a melon. Let's see what they had. What the hell kind of pit is that, Mark? A lot of springtails in it, whatever it is. I'll throw it in there. Eventually, it all gets broken down. Lobsters, lobster shell. <clears throat> um, what else gets broken? Everything. What the heck? Bones, chicken bones eventually get broken down. And this, of course, is mostly old material. Now, do I see any eggs in this one? Here's this straw that I put in a while ago. Try to, to, to try to stimulate more eggs and it backfired on me because I got a lot of those silly freaking scutterflies. I think that's how they got in. Never seen them before that day. All right, these go here. Get out of the way, get out of the way. So, one problem with fermenting, right? You could see it right already. It's too many damn parts, too much stuff. But, again, you can't, you know, once you pack it, leave it. You don't have to look at it again, and you don't have to, um, um, you know, buckets come a dime a dozen, at least where I live. I get a bu buckets like crazy, and buckets, of course, and I know I promised this by now, on Eve Tower, maybe my next video, I was hoping to go live, and I was just um, talking with Susie on going live. live. I got my thousand, finally got my thousand subscribers, if I can keep them, because we're gonna talk about all the no-nos no -no on my channel, guys. We're gonna talk about the stuff you're not supposed to compost or do vermiculture, and we're gonna start getting into the absolute no-nos that nobody talks about, which is politics and religion. Oh, Mark, what are you doing talking about politics and religion on a growing channel? Don't you know that's a no-no? But I have a feeling, here's a peanut shell, um, the politics and religion are the main problems in the world, right? Our politicians are wicked corrupt. Look at the United States as a classic example, and I'm, I'm sure we're not the only nation. Um, we're corrupt as hell, chicken bone. And the religions of the world, I feel, especially the Abrahamic faiths, are a, main, a major problem in the world. And they always have been. They've been slowing human progress down. They, they, they act like they do so much. 
with their giving and stuff. And don't get me wrong, some do do it. But you always got to be a part of the church and you always got to give to the church. And these evangelicals, as well as the Catholics, get silly rich. And granted, they do share some of their wealth, if you can say that. I, I know we got to say it, but um, I think there's another way of looking at it. And we're going to talk about that in upcoming videos. And I'm going to lose a lot of subscribers, I know. Probably me talking about this right now. But look forward to it, because you're going to learn something about some amazing stuff. We're going to talk about my hero, Thomas Paine. Many of you guys uh, should know that Mark, Mark Thomas Paine isn't my real name. That's my screen name. And I use it mostly because when I opened my Facebook group way back when, I did it as um, Eve Growing. And you, Facebook says, hey, you got to be a real person on here. you got to have a real name. So I had to change the name rather than lose all the, the, the subs that I had, which was probably not that many when I think about it, or friends and stuff like that. Um, how am I going here? 38. Instead of losing all my friends... I decided to say Mark Thomas Payne is my name, which is always good etiquette to use a different name anyway. Let me go get another bucket. Over here, how many I got left? Ah, oh God, you gotta see this one, guys. This one is, this one needs a different top. That's the problem with this one. Watch this, you're not gonna like it. Bam, that was the second one from the bottom. So all that liquid, of course, what we're going to do with it is we're going to pour it into our, that becomes our nitrogen. This stuff will help us heat up our pile, our CBCB. So it's all saved, nothing, it may be gross to some. See, that black, not good, but I'll wash that lid and reuse it again. Let's see what that looks like now, guys. It's very hard to, to do this and film at the same time, so I hope you guys cut me some slack. Here we go. Ready? Set. Not bad. Looks good. Let me smell. Smells good. This lid, see how this is raised up like that? It's gotta be flush, because though somehow the, the water did not get into there, and it still went you know, just not good. Blah, blah, blah. Let's do this. I can always tell when it's going to be a good bin. Wow, well, look at all the worms down at the bottom there. This was a good bin, I think. Now I'm going to have to clean out. Rescue those worms before they... See how they like to clog up this tube? You know, again, always wear glasses. In case something flies in your eyes and always wear gloves. I always wear gloves, but sometimes I forget my glasses. Some beautiful looking worms right here. Reds. Okay, again, I got this. All the stuff that's not done is going to go right in here. Now, when this these castings go into the nursery, that's where they... Right now, you wouldn't sell these castings because they're, they're too wet, right? They're too darn wet, so nobody's going to want to buy them. Not that I'm selling any anyway. This is plastic. I don't know how it got in there. They're not going to eat that. So chicken bone. Nowadays, I don't know if I said that, but chicken bones go through my power composter. We'll talk about that later on. I have it all set up to my upstairs sink. So everything is getting power composted again, like the early days of Eve Grown, when I used to make all this. Like this, this table here is a power composter. This is garbage disposal under here. But I haven't used it much because it's so much easier to use a... Um, a flat-ended spade. That's the deal. Get over here, guys. This is all good castings, castings right here. Real good castings. And my sink is all full. More worms. And again, these these chicken bones, they get brittle after probably four or five fermenting. But now that I'm able to break them down to such a small, I won't even see them from now on. And I like that idea. Let me go get another bin. This bin that I'm packing now is still... I still get some more space in. Okay, I got three more bins here we're gonna open today. There's the top one and the back row. Get over there, little guy. All right, let's see. Ready? Three, four. 
Yeah, so we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff on our channel. Um, oh, brother. That one had a lot. And how did you guys get in there? Uh, you, well, these are the scutter flies, too. Yep, yeah, they're not fruit flies. That's all right. We're going to get you all, too. My, this downstairs basement is enclosed, so they're not going to get into the main house. That's why it's always good to do your farming outside if you can, a shed or garage, somewhere where these bugs can't get upstairs. All right, so let's see here. Subfloor, look at that. Subfloor is literally nothing. Okay, it's just some old wire guys. And I see some of these beetles here, a lot of activity in this bin. And sometimes I wonder who's really doing all the work. Is it all these bugs that are associated with the worms themselves too, helping out, breaking it all down? Who knows? It's an underground world, that's for sure. This all stuff is going right in here. Boom, boom. A little damp. Um, it's still not going to um, wrap it, or maybe I will. Nah, that's good. This is all castings for the most part, though. This was a good bin. And let's see what I got crawling around in here. I see a lot of healthy looking worms. Here's a, one of those beetles. Here's a. Um, I'd say, I don't know what the heck happened with that bin, but I'm sorry, fly. Can't keep you. This is um, another one. Maybe this is the bin. I This bin that I just opened up, I think we're going to find, has a hole in it. Because I I got to definitely look into that bin. Some more. Look at We got all kinds of stuff. We got another soldier fly in there. So we get them. You gotta be vigilant. I gotta clean that one out. Are we still taping here? Yeah, I don't know how much more time we're gonna have. This is gonna be an hour show, guys. I still gotta edit it. These avocados, they do break down, guys, eventually. I've had I have had avocados that had it gone through some fermenting systems this year, and all of a sudden I got avocados growing in my yard here in New England, which you know they they die in the winter. It's a tropical thing, but try to keep them alive, but once I bring them inside, they don't do as good as outside. Maybe that's because of my setup. All right, this, this, this. All right, boom, 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 boom. All this stuff goes right back in. All right, let me go get another one. You guys go over here. This is all castings for the most part, and if it was spring, all these castings as they are, I could easily put in my tower and let the worms Work, take the worms out and whatever's in there. The, there'll be enough worms from their, the cocoons and stuff, but all this can go into a tower anyway. Again, you can't, you wouldn't sell it, but it's still good stuff. Let me go get another one. Of Jaws is good stuff. I got two more to open, and let's try to do that before I run out of um, stuff. And then my next video, I'll pack, I'll pack these up. Because right now, out of all the ones I've opened so far, I've only got two. I've got two. Whatever ones I opened, I, the, the remains is into two. Oh, I forgot to open that with you guys seeing. Another. That's where those guys have been coming from. I've been wondering. I see these guys flying out. And I hate to kill them because I've been trying to breed those guys in the summer. Pistachios in here. Okay, this is another one I just opened. I kind of opened it on the sly. The sly. I didn't think to show you guys, but that's what that one looks like. Let's tip it over like this. I want to work fast because. All right, there's that. That one's got to be cleaned out too. Got a couple of them I got to make sure I clean out after the fact. All right. See how this builds up in these, this screen? That's all castings in there of kills. I usually have to use this stick here. To beat that out of there, put that right there. Give me my one that I'm finishing up on. Put you in here, and let's put all the rest. This was a good one. This beef bone I've had going around for a long time. Nothing's really happening. Beef bones, steak bones, those are a tough one. I'm gonna try hot composting them first. Not that we eat a lot of steak or get a lot of those bones, but they're just, that's one thing I haven't seen break down really. This is a good this is a good bin all in all, chicken bone. Uh, eventually it gets brittle. They get inside, but this one's probably a fresher one. Alright. 
let's see. Uh, looks damp, huh? But they like, they like it damp. Look at those guys. They're loving that. Put that right in there. This one's almost full. In fact, it is full. What I'm going to do with this one is get these out of here. Let me get these out of here for now. And I'm going to close this one up and call it a bin. What I'm going to do is go down here and get some of these guys here. Now, actually, I'm just going to throw some of this right on there. There's enough food in there, enough worms in there from all the material. And see these beetles? I see a lot of beetles, guys. If you really, really look close and study this, I see a lot of those beetles. I thought I was weaning them out of there. But they're not. That's going to be a hard one to get rid of. Especially. All right, so... Let's cap this one, and we're at three. Three finished of the ones I opened. Let's put you here. One, two, three. Now, let's clean this guy out, I guess. Subfloor. That's a good material, I like that one. I picked it up free. Everything's free. Don't buy anything, folks. Really, anything that they're selling on the market, we can make far better. And I hate to say it, and my T55 is going to prove it as well, even with these urban worm bags. Um, we'll talk about those. Now, I started my T55 because I was wondering what system is better. These continuous flow systems or a vermentin system. And I'm finding that they both work. There's many ways to do things. And I don't want to dog the, 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 the vermi bag or the urban worm bag people. They're nice guys. I've seen how they make this stuff. A lot of work to make them. Um, I feel bad they have to do that work. I know they, hopefully they're making a living selling them. I, I mean, a lot of people I follow love these bags. But are they better than a, than a 55 gallon drum that's invincible? No zipper. You know, one thing about zippers that I, mean, I don't get... You know, I did follow, oh, I think it was Bentley. Bentley's channel, and he's done a couple reviews on my stuff. Bentley, I think, if you Google his stuff, I did Google where these, how these vermi bags started, bags started, or the worm bag, urban worm bag, and how it started. Fascinating. I don't know. I, I don't know. I know everybody says they're great. A lot of people I follow are using them, and I don't want to say anything bad about them, but... Are they more invincible than a 55-gallon drum? And I think the 55-gallon drum, I'm going to go a step further. I think it's better than the, um, the heck is that one? The guy from Australia did. That, oh, shoot. I'll think of it while I'm doing it. What the heck is that guy? I can't think of it offhand. It is the Hungry Worm Bin. The hungry bin, right? This guy. That thing's expensive, right? You can make, get yourself a big five gallon drum. You could make the, uh, I think, I think the T55 has more work, worm workspace. And, God, that's a tough cardboard, isn't it? Where are my scissors when I need them? I think the, um, the hungry bin, it's very expensive, first of all, we know that, right? And, I think the T55 is comparable to that thing. And the plastic's already made. People are getting rid of 55 gallon drums all day long. Right, so here's the deal. I've, I've started this next one and I've got one more bin to open up, I believe. Are we still rolling? Yeah, wow, I didn't know I had that much space. Um, I'm gonna open one more bin and then it's time to put some fresh material in. Yeah, I got one more bin to open up here, guys. And this is where a lot of the liquid went to. So this is going to be a scary one, too. I'm going to show you the top of the lid, how that looks. Because, again, see this design here is flawed. Got to be flush with this bucket because this water is, is hanging there. It's not going to overflow over here, but it's holding there. And we got a lot of springtails that made it through there. Those guys will all be um, hot composted. These springtails are going to go into my liquid nitrogen, and then we're going to fry them at 160 degrees anyway. So 
the beauty, and I should show you this by the end of the video, I gotta show you exactly how the this fermenting is really working. You got this top up here that's giving air from these sides, the air is going through here, and then it comes up here going into the next bin. Not only is it draining down, air is going up. So that's another way that bottom gets air, hopefully, plus the side on the side. So it really is a good aerated bin. And at the very least, folks, if you want to have a great way to a nursery where you can move it around easily because these buckets, at least you can move them around. That's another good thing about that. Let me dump this stuff out of here. This liquid. Where's my liquid nitrogen? There it should be. Dump that in there. And let's open this last bin up before my time runs out. Right. Last one. Boom. What do we got? More of those scatter flies. I hope my spiders enjoy. You know, again, I got a lot of baby spiders that have hatched, and they need little meals too, not just the big guys. But from now on, what I should do is just open one of these things sides up, suck it out with my power vac, and not have these flying all in my face like that. I wouldn't worry about it when it's outside. This is my last one. Oh, bother. One railed away. And I don't have a lot of worms in it. At least one worm. All right, so let me get my new one to start here. Boom. So I'll put this material in. And this got a lot of spring tails. So it was wet at the bottom, as we already know. Seems though when you get those springtails like some of us were pointing out in our Facebook groups I'm gonna put a couple links down below on some great face uh, Facebook, Facebook groups, groups that we talk all about this kind of stuff some amazing people that I'm gonna I, That I'm so appreciative. I love these guys. They have a passion for the vermiculture and First of all worm composting UK these guys you gotta you gotta jump on this guy's bandwagon because they really do a great job I think They've allowed me to say a lot of stuff that I say on there, which usually in other Facebook worm groups, I was, you know, kicked out. It's the same with the carbon-based composting thing with the Johnson Sioux Facebook group. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with, um, with Dr. Johnson and his wife. I don't know if that Facebook group does, but, you know, I posted some stuff. These towers that they're making, first of all, I think it's a little, little much. much these things to get the soil. And we'll talk about that in another video too. That bin was a good one right there. Okay, where are we at here? 55, I'm about to lose some power, I would think. So, let's see, what else did you want to see in this one? That was all castings in that one. And this grass, I'll be glad when this is all done. I think they were hiding in the crevices of that grass. That's my thought on the matter. Corn, always a worm in a corn. Here's an avocado. Ready? See this, ready for this? Ooh, look at how gooey goo. I guess that's what it does. But that goo, eventually they'll get in there and they'll eat that. They eat it all. If this one, see? That was a root I, I, of some kind that got the same as that uh, avocado pit. And there was a worm ready to go in there. They get it. So all in all, I had one bin out of those that I was not happy with. A, a bin that was somewhat working, but it was pretty much a dead bin. Nothing was really happening. The worms were probably so happy that I opened it up. In this pile I see here, a lot of movement. Uh, I do see a lot of, uh, some eggs, but I also see tons of these beetles. That I'll show you the, the, the beetle. And I've been juggling those beetles around for a while. Um, they even made it into my humanor one as well but not as bad and hopefully um, we can get rid of those if anybody has any suggestions on how to get rid of those that'd be great this is all castings here a lot of this stuff will go into my new bins too as as duff because i don't feel like going and getting some duff i'm just going to use these castings add some lime and some um uh oyster shell and i'm going to use this as my um my bedding in a lot of it. I'll, I'll save the castings here into a vermenting uh, bin as a nursery. These shells, these clam shells too, I've had going around for a long time. They're not, they're so hard. That's not breaking down, but I keep throwing them in there. You know, I, I don't have a machine that can break it down really good, 
But I think. But if I could ever get my hands on a, uh, one of those commercial grade, you know how they render certain livestock with them, a big one like that, that would be the bomb, I think, for um, breaking down massive amounts of organics. You got to break it down to the smallest possible pieces, folks. If you're, you know, it's for me, it's a question of are you petting your worms and playing with them and just throwing them, you know, you got to break it down to the, as small as you can. Because again, these guys have little mouths, tons of eggs right here, little mouths and no teeth. Here, let's see. Yeah, look at there's a worm in there. They like to go in those comfy, cozy little spots. All right, I'm gonna shut it off for now. And then we're going to let these worms go down. I'll start saving these castings and we'll close up this video. That's it, I just opened up a bunch of bins. Very boring for the most part. Talked a little bit, little bit about what I'm gonna do uh, in my upcoming videos that would potentially lose some subscribers. But guess what, time's running out for us, folks. You see it all in the news. And we can do something about it. We gotta get, we gotta kickstart this urban farming movement. And when I talk about a new world order, I'm not talking about the new world order as these religious fanatics think about it. I'm talking about a new world order where we become an agrarian society, where we all learn how to make soil and grow food for each other. Real jobs, important jobs. And we're gonna mechanize those jobs as well. And we're gonna mechanize it to the point where, to the point where we have more time for leisure and study and not be tied into some freaking job we get paid nothing to do all our lives. We're gonna, we're gonna turn our society into a resource-based economy or equivalent. And I'll put some links to the Venus Project, the Zeitgeist Movement, and the Free World Charter. My work is a hands-on. You know, these guys have all the, the lingo, the language down. Mine is the hands-on part what we actually have to do. And folks, we have to make soil as if our lives depend on it because in all reality, it does. Let me close for now and I'll ramble on in the next section. I'm at an hour. Wow, I didn't know I had that much storage. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a little long, a little boring. They're gonna get a little shorter and that's all I have to say for now. God bless, over and out.